Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Allah says, We did not send any messenger. <coughs> Allah says, We did not send any messenger except to be obeyed by the permission of Allah. And if they... And if, when they wronged themselves, they had come to you and asked forgiveness of Allah, and Messenger wasallam had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah accepting of repentance and merciful. In this verse 64 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the reason why Allah has been sending messengers or prophets towards different people in different times and different nations. Allah says that the prophets were not just sent, that people claim to have faith on them or people simply acknowledge them as messengers and people just announce and declare and highlight that they love them and they respect them and they regard them or they keep on in the love in the respect and in the regard of the prophets the followers they just keep on arranging huge huge sira conferences or very extensive seminars or they keep on uh, having get-togethers or they arrange gatherings to recite the Rood or to recite poems praising the Prophet ﷺ. But when all these people doing all these activities and claiming and declaring and announcing and doing all these activities, when they are asked to obey, to obey what the Prophet ﷺ has brought and what he actually taught, they failed to obey. They refuse to obey, they reject, they rebel, and they do not accept the code of life, the mode of ethics Prophet Sallallahu brought and taught. This was not the purpose. The purpose of Prophet Sallallahu being sent for all of us, for all the followers, the purpose of sending Prophet Sallallahu was that we obey, we obey, we adopt, we accept the code of life he brought instead of all forms of mode of ethics, instead of all forms of code of lives. This is the basic purpose why prophets were sent towards people. And then in verse number 65, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَزَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا But now, no by your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing and saying that no, they will not believe. They will not believe till when? Until they make you. You means what? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They will not believe that they will not be true believers until they make Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam judge concerning over what or over which they dispute among themselves and then find within themselves no discomfort from what they have judged and submit in full willing submission. So in verse number 65, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually swearing by his name. Allah is swearing by his name and Allah is saying that there is absolutely not possible. It is not possible that that person may be considered as a believer in the eyes of Allah. Allah will not consider that person as a believer who does what? Until and unless he makes the decisions of his life according to the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He makes the 
teachings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a judge in his life. Whenever he has to make a decision in his life, he takes guidance and counsels from the teachings of Sunnah and Hadith. And then what he gets from there, he, he accepts them, he submits to them, and he submits to them willingly, completely, in total submission without any regrets. Then only can he be considered as a Muslim, as a believer in the eyes of Allah. You know, we, throughout our lives, and we, from morning to evening, we are continuously making decisions, aren't we? Like, should I wear this or shouldn't I? Should I eat this or shouldn't I? Should I go to this gathering or party or shouldn't I? Should I, should I make my business dealings or should I? Shouldn't I? Should I accept the proposal for my sister or for my daughter? Or should I give the right of inheritance to my daughters or my sisters or shouldn't I? Should I give dowry to my daughter or my sister or shouldn't I? Should I take loan on riba or shouldn't I? These are all decisions which we are continuously making in our lives throughout the day, throughout our lives. So now to be a believer, to be a true believer and to be able to perfect our belief, what do we need to do? We need to make these decisions in the light of what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us in Hadith and Sunnah. And what we get from Hadith and Sunnah for these decisions, we should without being any, any having any doubt, being any form indecisive, being in any form without being doubtful, without being uncomfortable, we should we should accept them with full willing heart and soul and submit to them. You sallimu taslima. You submit to them with total submission, with total surrendering and feel no re regrets after doing so. So this is what is going to make a person a true believer in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.